In this video, we'll look at five idealized op amp characteristics and compare them to the behavior that we would observe in a real op amp. The idealized op amp is a useful design tool, but you need to identify situations in which the difference between theory and reality affects the actual performance of the circuit. The idealized infinite gain op amp would lead to a circuit that saturates at the positive or negative rail every time a peak of old of noise creates a difference between Vn plus and Vn minus. This isn't very useful when the op amp is used alone, but it is a very helpful assumption for op amps in a negative feedback configuration. Op amps typically have gain in the range of 10 to the 5th to 10 to the 6th volts per volt, and these gains are large enough that the actual closed loop gain of a negative feedback circuit is very close to the theoretical value. Modeling the ideal op amp as a voltage controlled voltage source with a control voltage of Vn plus minus Vn minus implies complete elimination of voltages that are present in both input signals. The only thing that affects the output amplitude is the difference between the two input amplitudes. Infinite common mode rejection is not realistic because it would require perfect manufacturing. However, real life op amps offer common mode rejection that is high enough to meet the needs of typical applications. Ideal op amps have no current flow into their input terminals, and they have infinite input impedance. The input impedance of real op amps is finite, but usually large enough to ensure negligible amounts of current flow. Op amps also have input bias currents, that is, currents that flow through the input terminals and enable operation of the IC's internal circuitry. Input bias currents are small in BJT op amps, and extremely small in MOSFET op amps. Nevertheless, they will cause serious problems in circuits that do not provide a proper DC path for these currents. The VCVS op amp model shows no resistance in series with the output terminal, indicating that the idealized op amp has zero output impedance. Real life op amps typically have output resistance of 50 to 200 ohms, but the effective output resistance is greatly reduced by negative feedback. In some cases, it is appropriate to incorporate output resistance into a careful analysis of an op amp circuit. The ideal op amp's infinite bandwidth is the most unrealistic. The VCVS model does not contain any frequency dependent elements, and consequently the operation of the idealized op amp is not affected by the frequency of the input signal. The bandwidth of many general purpose op amps is actually rather narrow, and real life op amp frequency response plays a prominent role in many design and analysis tasks. We'll cover this important topic more thoroughly in a future video. For more details, check out the link in the description or visit allaboutcircuits.com.